Hello and welcome once again to This Week in Campbell Football, brought to you by Precision Ford. With Campbell head coach Mike Minner, I'm Chris Haymeyer. On the show today, we will look back at the game against 15th ranked Monmouth, take a look forward to Campbell's final game of the regular season at Charleston Southern, talk about Campbell with a chance to set a program record in wins. Coach, I want to begin the show with a look at our seniors. They are already the winningest class in program history. What's the reason for their success? Well, I mean, anytime you start with who we are as people, right? We talk, we start with the cornerstones and and um, industriousness and enthusiasm, and, and these guys brought that from day one. You know, I mean, they was in both worlds. So they was in the PFL and, of course, in the Big South, and really. Um, have built a great foundation for this football team to continue to build on and they you know continue to you know take it to the next level and that's really what it's all about um, these guys are, are, are people that you know Chris right there Chris Webb <laughs> now I coached him in Little League and so this is why our relationship is so good and and um, you know to see him graduate from Little League now from um, college is, is it's amazing but but I love each and one of these guys and um, these guys have been, um, they meant a lot to this program and to me personally, um, they bought into what we was doing and, and how to change the culture from, um, you know, being a losing culture to a winning culture. They, they bought into that and, and they came and, and they worked hard every single day um, to make that happen. And so you really just got to tip your hat off to each one of them. Miss, I'm going to miss those guys. You know, some of them going to hang around. They love me so much. They, they, they want to hang around and and do some GA type work for us um, as far as coaches is concerned. I think Webb is one of those guys. Um, Cuttington will be another one of those guys. So, hey, look, we, we must be doing something right. They still want to hang out and work for me. So, you know, the great thing is, is, is um, man, they some, they some great guys in the classroom, in the community, on the football field. Um, and now they got a chance, you know, to make history. And that's really what it's about this weekend. Coach, I know at home you wanted to yeah. send them off a little better. Against 15th ranked Monmouth, your Camels, they led midway through the second quarter. Two turnovers led to two touchdowns. A similar script to what you experienced against Kennesaw State, against a top ranked team, your team leading into the third quarter. Two turnovers turned into two touchdowns. I know there's a lot more to it, but yeah. you yeah. personally, I know those mistakes yeah. hurt you and the team. What do you do to try to neutralize those mistakes that have been changing the game? Well, you know, we, we're young, and we got, we got to continue to, to know that. Now, is that an excuse not to execute in the moment? No, that's not an excuse. It's just what reality is right now, and what reality is is, is the fact that um, young football teams, if you look at them throughout history, I don't care if you start at the beginning of the history of football to now, um, young football teams don't know how to handle the third quarter. This is the this is the moment, and I and I believe it's because the third quarter is where the game is kind of in that lull of I've been out here for a minute. The initial piece of the game is kind of wore off, and now, but it ain't the fourth quarter yet. This is where the focus come in. This is where the maturity of a football team come in because they stay in the moment. They stay together. They stay. Uh, focused and, and executing and when you look at that football game now we up 7-0 uh, we stop them we get the ball and we dial up the play because this is when you take your shot we got the win um, you take your shot at this and Kelsey is wide open and the wind takes the ball over his head just a couple of steps away um, that's 14-0 right there the game is a different ball game okay now you fast forward to them and they get those turnovers. They execute their plays perfectly, right? Right, you know, um, the first one, hand it off to 25, block it up perfectly. He gets the hole, he takes it to the end zone, right? And then the next time they kick the ball, um, the ball bounce up because the wind like 40 miles an hour, <laughs> the ball bounce up. They get it, okay? They execute that. Now the next play, they execute a great ball over the um, shoulder to number two, touchdown right so that's 14 points three times they had to execute in the moment this is what great football teams do now you take us we go in 17 10 at halftime we now kicking it in the wind 
We said, we're going to do the same thing to them. Kick it up in the air, ball bounces, and it bounced right in front of our guys and right over their head, and it bounces for 30 seconds, and they get the ball. I mean, come on. We, we couldn't have kicked it better. The wind couldn't have blew it better, and, um, and we didn't execute. That's the difference between great football teams and good football teams. Good football teams can do it sometimes. Great football teams do it all the time, and that's what you saw on Saturday. Coach, you talked about the execution being the difference. How do you make the execution better? Well, you know, I think one is experience, right? Guys got to go through these moments. You can tell them all day as coaches. You can tell them all day as an ex-player that played in these moments. Um, but until they go through it, it's like being a parent, right? You can tell your kid all day long, look, don't do this, don't do this, do this, do that. And they still got to go through it in order for them to say, okay, this is the way I'm going to handle the situation, right? So now they know. So we go into the offseason, now they understand what we what we balancing against, right? So we understand what we trying to develop is that uh, ability to execute in the moment no matter what the pressure is, no matter what the moment is. You got to be able to execute. And, um, and then, you know, we get another offseason. All right, that was really our first offseason as a scholarship program where we was able to do winter conditioning, come in the summer, pay for it, and have them here in the summer. That was the first time. Now we get number two. And so we're going to be that much better with experience, um, and I think that's how you deal with it is you got to get experience and you got to get older and you got to get bigger and stronger again so you can now focus for 13 weeks opposed to seven to eight weeks. Coach, one of your many exciting young players that already seems experienced is Justice Galloway Velasquez. He's a sophomore. He's your middle linebacker. Coach, this Saturday, he is just eight tackles away from breaking Campbell's single-season tackle record. How has he had such success being so young? Well, first of all, you got to give a lot of credit to the defensive coordinator and Glosser, who also his position coach. Um, he's done a great job of getting these guys prepared, and, and especially number two. It was his first year starting, so now he got an opportunity to start, you know, from the start to the big, um, to the end, and he's a force, and he's still learning. He's a puppy, right? So all these guys that we're looking at that we're saying is doing great things in the season, they're young guys. I mean, this is a true sophomore who – who really didn't have a lot of snaps last year. So imagine what he's going to be next year when he get another offseason of training in him. And, um, you know, he, he just loves the game. He loves the game. He's a student of the game. He comes to practice every day. He got great energy to, because you got to have energy throughout the week to be able to, to, to uh, prepare the way you need to prepare in order to be able to play like that. And, and um, so you got to tip your hat off to Judd. I'm glad he's on our side. <laughs> Um, when we got him in recruiting, uh, one of our first recruiting classes, man, I was excited because I know we stole um, a great football player. And now everybody that's part of Campbell family get a chance to see what I was excited about two years ago when we signed the kid from Fayetteville, um, North Carolina. So, man, we, we're excited about him. He's the quarterback of our defense. And, uh, you know, he's eight tackles away. He's going to break the record. I'm sorry, Carlos, you had it for like two years. But, um, you know, Justice has done a great job in, in you know, leading the way. Hopefully, uh, you know, he lead us to victory this Saturday. Well, one final game left, Coach. Your team travels down to Charleston Southern. This is a team better than their record, especially because they're hot right now. Tied oh, yeah. for you and your team, Charleston Southern, for third place in the Big South Conference. They've won three straight games. They have one of the best pass rushes in the entire conference, but why have they been so successful as of late? Well, first of all, they, they was a good football team to start with, right? So it, it's not like um, they, they wasn't any good. They was picked to finish third in our conference at the beginning of the year. So it just took some time to get used to the new coach, his style, what is he bringing to the table, and, um, and they have caught up now to his style and what he wants and what he expects. Uh, but they already had players, as you can tell, 31, 33 on the outside, guys, that, you know, 40 right there closing. 
Um, these guys can play some football. Um, 11 outside on offense, um, big time receiver who they did not have last year. Now he's back, senior, fifth year senior. He understands everything. Then you got two quarterbacks who can get out the pocket, who can you know make plays with their legs. Very similar to the type of guy that we have. And we know what he does the defenses. And so um, they, they have weapons all over the field. They got, a, you know, seniors at, at, at offensive line. We got to see them last year, uh, physical group. Um, and so this is going to be a physical contest. And so we, we have to earn the right to beat this football team um, because they're going to come in. They want to end up with a 500 record, right? So that's what they're fighting for. They want to end up number three in the conference. Um, that's what they're fighting for. So um, they're going to have a lot to play for, too, a lot of pride, a lot of, um, you know, momentum building into next season. Um, and, and we want the same thing. So you got two dogs coming in with the same thing. Like, we want to get to number seven. Uh, we we want to be number three in the conference. And, and um, so it's a lot riding on this game. And, you know, we're excited about the opportunity. And, and we're going to have fun with this week because this is our last week. But I told our guys, listen, this is the first step in 2020, okay? So this is not the last step in 2019. It's the first step in 2020. And so we have to come ready to go so we can uh, get that momentum going into the off season, and um, everybody will feel good, right? Thanksgiving will be good. Christmas will be good. I told my coaches, hey, look, guess what? This is the only present you're getting anyway because you got kids. They're going to get all the presents. You got a wife. You, you're going to buy her everything. You, you get nothing. So you better get this win so you can feel good on Christmas too. If there wasn't enough <laughs> riding on the game, Coach, win number seven will be a program record. But the holidays on the line coming up this Saturday at Charleston Southern. The game will be on ESPN+. Plus. We'll bring it to you live play-by-play, 88.3 FM, and links at GoCamels.com. We have one more show left next Tuesday to wrap up this season, hopefully talking about win number seven. For Coach, I'm Chris. Thank you for joining us on This Week in Campbell Football.